What's up, guys? Hope you've been having a fantastic week so far, and happy 4th of July. Uh, I don't know exactly when I'll be posting this video, um, so I'm actually recording right now on the 4th, so hope you guys had a great holiday, spending good time with your family, casting some fireworks, and just chilled. Uh, that is if you're in the U.S., but I uh, hope you guys had a good holiday, though. Uh, today, we'll be looking at the orcs. Um, I love the orcs. I, I know a little bit about them, a little bit, but I've heard good things about them. You guys have the comments in the past videos have been really great at explaining them and kind of their role in the 40k universe and where they've come from. Uh, I'm curious. I kind of always get a little more into them just so we can tell our factions a little bit. I want to dive a little deeper into them and kind of learn a little more about them besides their unique ability and to uh, imagine anything. Like if they think red, it makes them gods and they become a god because they believe in it, which is pretty cool, but it's different. Uh, but I'm I'm excited. I'm excited. Um, if you guys want to check out the original video? Please, please, please look in the description. You'll see it there. Show uh, show them some love. You know, so far every video I've done for their, any 40k content, the original creators have done a fantastic job at explaining and making it as easy as possible to learn. So make sure I show them some love. Uh, also, if you guys want to, you guys can like and subscribe. It's free. I greatly appreciate it. We're on that grind. Without further ado, let's get to it. Let's do it. In the grim darkness of the 41st millennium, there is only war. Each day on a million worlds, armies clash in an eternity of carnage and slaughter to the laughter of thirsting gods. Across the galaxy, disparate forces muster their fleets in the grim hope that one day, victory might be claimed for the emperor, the ruinous powers, the greater good, or a thousand other lost causes. Most fail to realize that the universe in which they exist will not suffer any lasting triumph. Another day's survival is all that can be achieved. Hmm. In this galaxy hostile to every form of civilization, only one has managed to not only endure, but thrive. They are the most successful race encountered by man, seemingly built for war in every aspect. They Give me are that, crude, baby. Savage, yes, and possess only a low cunning. But while the great works of races a thousand times more advanced lay in ruins, the ramshackle designs of the orcs thunder onward. Orc physiology is fascinating, terrifying, and contradictory in equal measure. They exist as a complex interweaving of two symbiotic organisms huh. that somehow have been genetically linked. That's really cool. One strain is akin to any number of terrestrial animals found across the galaxy, while the other is a type of fungus, which prevails throughout an individual orc's bloodstream and skin. Really? The animalistic component of their biology carries the genetic information for an orc's subspecies while the fungus seems to possess the genetic information of the entire race. This wow. latter aspect exhibits many other curious properties, including some kind of ingrained genetic memory or knowledge, a type of biosynthesis, a latent psychic ability, and the capacity to quickly recover from injury. Amazing. Their ability to withstand tremendous punishment is the defining characteristic of the orc <laughs> race. They feel surprisingly little pain, even when horrifically injured, and can recover from nearly any type of wound. That's Orcs crazy. that have been literally cut apart have been known to survive when stitched back together, and beheaded orcs, whose heads were then attached back on their own or another's body, have been able to fully recover as well. Is that crazy? Like, like, like that's some crazy durability. And this probably comes down to what I said in the start of the video about their, like, imagination. Like, if they believe that this doctor this orc doctor can fix them, then he will fix them. You know? It, I mean, it's kind of what it comes down to, right? You know, it, ha it has to be because of that. You know, of course they're just durable because of their, you know, just the way their bodies work, obviously, as we just heard. But I think it comes down to just their unique ability as well, too, which makes them even more lethal. You know? I mean, imagine you're just fighting this huge beast and you think you disarm him he just picks up a rock and thinks it's a nuke and just throws it down and just blows up you know don't think it works that way but you know it's just kind of how the orcs are you know that's why i found them so cool while any other species would weaken or tire when subjected to constant physical harm over a prolonged period of time the opposite appears true for the orcs they can survive grievous wounds with little apparent long-term consequences wow. save some superficial scarring and instead seem to develop physically the more damage they are able to endure. Really? The average orc stands much taller than a man, 
although their typical hunched stance makes this not readily apparent. Orcs will grow all their lives, and a particularly skillful orc will continue to become larger and stronger until they are beaten or killed. Orc reproduction remains barely understood, but revolves oh. around a kind of fungal spore. If left undisturbed, entirely self-sufficient communities of orcs can arise from these spores years or even decades after their predecessors were defeated or driven away. Wow. Like the extragalactic Tyranids, the orcoid race resembles an ecosystem composed of various subspecies arranged in a brutal hierarchy. Colloquially, these component species are referred to as greenskins. The first and least complex form of orc life to gestate are squigs. This foot. What is that thing? Squigs are themselves comprised of various subtypes used by higher forms of orc life for nearly every purpose. Huh. Oil squigs secrete a viscous black lubricant used to keep orc machinery functioning. Mending squigs can be used to suture limbs back in place, while face biter squigs are little more than ravenous drooling mouths on legs and kept by orc warlords as a symbol of status. Other forms of squig life include parasite hunting squigs, bag squigs, and the rare and bizarre squig pipe utilized as a musical instrument. What the, hell? the most common squig is the eaten squig, a limbless blob that feeds on orc refuse, which is in turn consumed by higher orc species. Feared above all is the squig off, what the which hell? range in size from that of a main battle tank to the titans used by the Collegia Titanica. What the hell? Next to emerge are snotlings. Far too scrawny and weak to bear weapons and lacking the violent tendencies of their larger brethren, snotlings instead cultivate the large patches of fungi that spread wherever orcs multiply. They provide food, drink, and medicine to the orc race and possess a natural affinity for squigs, which they raise and then train. So basically, like, the orcs that we know are, like, the warriors, and then these guys are, like, like, the farmers, the, basically, like, the, like, the normal, the normal, like, group of orcs. Like, almost like, like, goblins. They, they look like little goblins, honestly. Huh. I had no idea. I thought orcs just did it all themselves. Interesting. In battle, a snotling's only use is that of ammunition. Oh, it's poor things. Fired from a cool device known as the shock attack gun. That's awful. <laughs> above the snotlings in the greenskin hierarchy are the Gretchen, or Grots. Of all the orc subspecies, they display the greatest capacity for cunning. They are fast learners and quick to spot an opportunity or weakness. Within any orc tribe, most serve as laborers, scouts, thieves, or even assassins. The Gretchen's instinct for self-preservation borders on a rudimentary sixth sense, although this is often not enough to prevent them from being forced into serving as living shields, minesweepers, or emergency rations. Yikes. Emergency rations? The above emergency rations? Dude, imagine being called to service and think you're going to fight, you know, for the for, for the honor of your race, and you're like, yeah, you know, we're just going to just eat you. <laughs> Emergency rations. That is so bad. Oh my gosh. That sucks. Like you're only being brought into combat just in case they run out of food. <sighs> okay. Average intelligence of the Gretchen has led to the emergence of an underground economy within their normally orc dominated society. Many Gretchen operate their own black market businesses selling fungus beer roasted squigs, or gambling enterprises. The level of sophistication present in these enterprises is almost unknown elsewhere in the Greenskin civilization, and enables the Gretchen to enjoy relatively comfortable lives while still existing as slaves to their larger masters. Mm. These subspecies endure a symbiotic Damn. relationship with their orc overseers, trading menial tasks in exchange for protection. Within the orcs themselves, they're saying they have like a connection as he's just just slapping them around just over like dead space marine bodies like okay <laughs> it's a great it's great themselves the social hierarchy is straightforward and brutal they will instinctively obey those larger than themselves and while some might rise to prominence through cunning or deception most seize power and retain it through the application of brute force hmm. 
At the head of every orc horde is a war boss or warlord, typically the biggest and meanest of his kind, who has risen through the ranks to primacy by winning battles and killing any other challengers. First and foremost a powerful warrior, the war boss will hold absolute authority in his tribe or warband. The decisions of the war boss are enforced by a crude ruling caste of orcs known as knobs. A type of nobility amongst the orcs by the loosest definition of the word, the knobs have earned a position of prominence due to their greater than average size and strength. Makes sense. All others in an orc tribe are referred to as boys. Depending the boys. on their specialty in combat, the boys. they may be known as slugga boys, shooter boys, ard boys, wild boys, or fly boys. I love it. While any orc intelligent enough to recognize which part of a grenade is thrown once the pin is removed is known as a stick bomber. A cast of specialists also exists within the boys, orcs who have been born with specific information programmed into their minds that are released once they reach maturity. Huh. These so-called odd boys include pain boys or mad docs who use their stabby bits as medical tools. Stabby bits. The crude bionics that are sometimes implanted in higher ranking orc are the work of pain boys, although their work in this area has the tendency to explode without warning. Okay. These too exist within the orc race, referred to as weird boys. Weird boys. Unlike those in other races, these weird boys draw upon the innate psychic potential of the orc species itself, rather than the energies of the warp. Really? This type of psychic power has its own dangers, however. Should a weird boy soak up too much of this energy, his head may explode, and the resulting backlash also explode the heads of any orcs nearby. To be honest, that doesn't sound as bad as going mad crazy by the warp and having an infestation of demons. You know? Like, yeah, that's kind of bad. You know, you used to be chilling eating a sandwich and then, you know, your guy soaks up too much energy and your head blows off. So that sucks, but it's better than having, like, a shit ton of demons just nonstop flooding your, you know, your place. You know, I mean, there's, there, there's always something worse, right? Unless there's more to this and, you know, they're not explaining, but... This sounds better than actually harnessing power from the warp itself, in my opinion. I. Mech boys, or mechaniacs, serve as engineers and technicians who build all the weapons, vehicles, and other technology used by the orc race. Hmm. Like every other advanced process associated with the greenskins, <laughs> their work is notorious for suddenly exploding. Orc Why technology not, right? is one of the least understood facets of their civilization. It is almost always ramshackle and slapped oh my together, gosh. yet functions as well or better than Wait. anything comparable <laughs> within other species. Is the tiny little guy just over slapping the space marine's face as he getting sawed in half? <laughs> That's the funny. The impossible <laughs> nature of orc technology I love orcs, is believed man. to be a result of their latent psychic powers. If enough orcs believe something is true, it, is. it will actually become so, brought into existence through pure will. As such, orc rockets painted yellow create bigger explosions, orc vehicles painted red will go faster, and orc guns are often nothing more than a box with bolts and bits of metal in it. <laughs> this technology it works, it works, it is, right? is the result of a constant stream of poorly thought out experimentation and attempts to constantly outdo the competition. It is usually as deadly to its operators as to the enemy, and countless orcs have died in the pursuit of building the biggest, fastest, or meanest weaponry. This simplistic and brutal approach is reflected in every aspect of what they call culture. Questions regarding the nature of the universe that have led entire civilizations to corruption and ruin never occur to orcs in the first place. They have but one philosophy, might makes right, and not one orc has ever doubted this for a single moment. This unshakable self-belief is likely the most dangerous quality of the orcs. For them, the universe is a very simple and straightforward place, free Damn. of the angst and worry that plagues most other races. Orcs have little recognition for concepts like fate or destiny, and are not frustrated when their plans fail. Instead, they just try again usually in a different way after forgetting how they attempted it the first time. <laughs> Never does an orc reflect on their own weakness, instead making remarkable progress through bloody trial and error. 
As long as an orc has someone to fight, someone bigger to tell him who to kill next, and someone smaller to abuse, he will know contentment. War and killing are their only real motivation, the one exception being the desire to possess even bigger and louder weapons or vehicles. Orcs are almost always engaged in a torrent of bloodshed and mindless violence, sometimes against the other races of the galaxy, but typically amongst themselves. Usually these conflicts are smaller scale or localized, and never develop beyond random outbursts of violence and looting. Sometimes, however, should a particularly skilled war boss achieve a string of successes, orcs will flock to his banner to share in his victories. Once this orc population reaches a form of critical mass, a WOG might be declared. Part military campaign and part migration, a WOG is a war on an apocalyptic scale. Jeez. Orcs beyond counting swarm from one continent to the next, uh -huh. and eventually from world to world. As tales of the WOG spread, more orc clans will rush to join, while any potential challengers are either defeated and their clan subsumed, or they will take control of the walk themselves. Wow. As this campaign gains more and more momentum, the disparate clans within grow more unified until they represent an uns- Even with corruption in their own ranks, they're still like lethal on the you know on combat. It's like you know, if you think of any military kind of standing, as soon as like the the chain of commands, you know, falters, you know. Everything kind of falters a little bit, you know. But for the orcs, like you know, you have a group of XX orcs come into to this huge parade of violence, and then they'll take over it somehow, and it supposedly destroys a chain of command. But the orcs don't care. Like, oh, you kill them, so you big boss now. Okay, we just keep on killing. You know, it's just kind of that's why that's basically their mindset. You know, that's that's just hilarious stoppable force on the galactic stage. That's so cool. These wogs rarely possess any clear objective, seeking wogs. only to unleash as much carnage as possible across the universe. Huh. Sorry about the cut there, guys. There's a uh, YouTube ad. They always seem to put them in the wrong places at the wrong time, so apologies for that. Within orc culture, a wog is the ultimate expression <laughs> of their twin gods, Gork, who is brutal but cunning, and Mork, who is cunning but brutal. While they may seem identical to outsiders, Gork is said to be the god of clobbering, smashing, and killing, while Mork is the god of clobbering, smashing, and killing, while an enemy's back is turned. <laughs> Orcs exist in every corner of Love the it. universe, and there is no environment Love too it. extreme for them to not only survive, but flourish. They have been discovered on toxic death planets, depressurized orbital platforms, Dude, drifting ice flows, irradiated asteroid fields, inside corrosive swamps, or on lightless nightmare worlds seething. I think it's also because of the fact they have that fungus with them as well. You guys know fungus isn't just, just stuff like that is very resilient and just tough, you know? I got it's it, that's probably why they're able to just live anywhere it's just because just from just their beginning they're coming from something that's so resilient and they just they go off from that you know that that's kind of how I'm seeing it you know just just their biology really they're just a tough predators. species even in the bombed out remains of planets subjected to exterminatus orcs can sometimes be found wow. and there are rumors of orc enclaves hidden within the eye of terror itself these holdings vary from pirate outposts that prey on merchant shipping to systems spanning orc empires inhabited by tens of trillions of greenskins. Jeez. These are normally divided into tens clans and tribes. Clans are massive groups of orcs who share an enduring philosophical viewpoint on greenskin life, while tribes are much less stable, constantly breaking apart and reforming. A single tribe might include orcs from many different clans, but for the most part, an individual orc's allegiance is to his war boss above his clan. Okay. While it can be difficult to distinguish all the orc clans, generally there are six that are truly widespread. And because found it's, in it's like a cage in his back. The okay. <laughs> the Bad Moons, Blood Axes, Death Skulls, Evil Sons, Goths, and Snake Bites. It is the dream of every aspirant war boss to one day unite the clans and tribes and usher in an even greater era of slaughter across the galaxy. 
Many have come close. Clawjaw, the mighty mangler of Bork, Tuska, the demon killer, Snagrod, the arch arsonist, and Nazdrag, Ugg, Erdgrub. Above them all, however, is the self-proclaimed Prophet of the Wog, known to the Imperium as the Beast of Armageddon, Gazgul Mag Uruk Thraka. Say that time time is fast. Holy crap. The single most influential orc in the galaxy, Gazgul Thraka believes himself to be the instrument of Gork and Mork, destined to lead the greatest wog of all time. This is in part is he due alive? to the work of Mad Dog Grotznik, whose cybernetic enhancements have supposedly allowed Thraka to speak to the great green gods of the orcs directly. Again and again, Gazgul has unleashed his followers against the Imperium. Damn. Or come to the aid of the Octarius Empire in their fight against the Tyranids. But as the time of ending approaches and the great rift of chaos spreads across the galaxy, it is clear that Gazgul Thraka has his sights on a higher calling. Across every orc clan and tribe, rumors abound that Gazgul will soon proclaim the Ragnarok, a time when every orc shall rise up to conquer the galaxy. Damn. In untold numbers, Orcs have already started their migration towards the key battles of the Great Wag, and should Ragnarok finally be declared, there may be no force in the galaxy strong enough to withstand it. I can believe it. I don't think, I don't think anyone could stop them. Tyranids or anything, bro. I don't think anything could stop them, bro. You know, Orcs are just too, just too different, man. I think they said the best, that there'd be nothing that can stand up to them. And I firmly believe that. You know, uh, j just from what we just heard about the orcs, and just, and of course, it's probably pretty fair. There's probably way more about these guys than, than I've learned so far. You can't stop them. You know, like, you can't, like, even if there's corruption in their own ranks, they won't stop. They'll just be like, oh, he's dead? Oh, he's dead now? Pfft, okay, we'll follow you now. I don't care. You know, like, it's just, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You can't destroy them internally. They can't destroy themselves internally. And all it takes is one big mean guy to just rise above the rest and they all flock to him. You know? It's it's crazy. So, no. I, if they ever joined in one huge army in mass, I don't think anyone's going to stop them. There's just no one that I've learned of so far that's powerful enough to actually can compete with that. You know, the Tyranids have the size and the numbers and demons too, but... What are you going to do with the orcs? They'll just keep on evolving and changing just like the Tyranids do, except the orcs are not just doing it just to match, they're doing it to better. You know? Like they said, they make a bigger gun as long as they have someone to fight. So if the Tyranid becomes bigger and badder, the orcs will become bigger and badder itself. You know, you can't outdo the orcs. The orcs will just keep on progressing and changing, and just by their psychic ability to just, you know, we'll paint this blue and it's a nuke. Well, this this piece of scrap metal is now a nuke. You know, it's just kind of how it is. You know, if they really believe it. So, uh, this video was awesome. I I enjoyed it. I love the orcs. I love to learn more about the orcs. So, if you guys have anything to add in the comments, please please do it. I'd love to read it and learn more about the orcs. I I, I enjoy that so much. Um, again, the original video will be in the description. Make sure you guys show them some love. They do a fantastic job, as you just saw in these videos, and just how much effort they put into it. So they deserve every little bit they get out of it. And make sure you guys like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys soon. Take it easy.